So I wanted to talk about two methods for bulk export and import of Maximo data. Um, I wanted to do this because when I first started in 2014, one of the first Maximo user group meetings I went to, somebody talked about this and it was super helpful in me in continuing to set up my Maximo system. So I thought this might be helpful for some other people who may be at the beginning of their journey or needing to update a lot of things. So first a little bit about Tampa Bay Water. Um, we are a regional wholesale water supplier for the Tampa Bay region which is right there. You can see in the map of Florida, kind of in the center on the uh, west coast. We service Pasco, Hillsborough, and Pinellas counties. We have a very large water system that transport, uh, transverses these three counties, and we're able to supply water from three different sources, from groundwater, surface water, and we also have a desalination plant down on the, um, in Tampa Bay down here. And this is just a summary of our unique complex system. Um, like I said, we have a lot of different facilities across the three counties, and we provide between 140 to 260 million gallons a day of water to our 2.5 million customers. Um, so on to the Maximo stuff. So there's two methods that I use for quick bulk data update. Um, one of them is the MX Loader program, uh, which is available to be able to download it from um, Bruno's website. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then there's also the native import export application features within Maximo itself. Um, so you can download or export from Maximo directly, work in your Excel file, get like a template out of it, work in the fill in the template, and then update it back to Maximo directly through the import feature. It's supported from 7.5 onwards, and it makes sure it validates everything through the Maximo business objects and utilizes the MIF or Maximo integration framework. So first I want to cover MX Loader very quickly. So this is available from Bruno, I think Portalot, Portaluri, say his name right? His website. Um, you can go there, download his Excel spreadsheet. It's a .xlsm file, so it's got some macros and stuff in it that allow it to interface with Maximo. And they have an updater if you already have that and need to update to its latest version. And there's also a user guide, which is extremely helpful in using his MX Loader Excel spreadsheet. When you first download it, you have to set the parameters on the configuration page and then test your connection. So here you would enter your service uh, or your um, server address. I put mine in, my username, and then you type your password in and hit test connection. And there's a bunch of other parameters down here that you can set so far as um, sizes, warnings, how many data uh, rows you want to be able to transfer back and transfer back and forth and set all those to whatever you need. And then you need to add one of the um, areas within Maximo that you want to update data for. So if you want to do assets, you would right up here, there's a add a new sheet and you put add a new MX sheet. It brings up a whole list. You can search it down and then hit OK and it will add in an asset sheet. So it brings some parameters across the top here as different fields that are on assets. If you want additional parameters that aren't listed, you can just type them in, continuing on row two, down through GH, you know, on and on. This field right here, the C1, is very important. Um, that's where you select whether you're querying data or updating data. And then D1 is very important. That's where you enter your query as to how you're going to filter down what data you're pulling from Maximo. So I find the easiest way to figure out what that query is, especially if you don't understand query language, is you go to Maximo itself. So you go to Maximo on the screen you're normally used to working on, your list screen, type in whatever queries you want. So on this one, I just said I want to filter my locations by MB, which is an abbreviation for my Morris Bridge location. And then I go to advanced search, that little drop down arrow, and go onto the where clause. And right here, it tells me my exact query. So I just copy that information and then paste it back into that D1 cell. So then I've got my query that Maximo is going to understand in my D1 cell, and then I can hit run up here on the Excel spreadsheet, and it runs and automatically pulls data down from Maximo. Then if I need to update anything, for example, in this sheet, I went ahead and made inactive these ones for status. Then I want to go here to C1 and change it from querying, which is pulling the data, to sync add change, which will send all the data back to Maximo and change it directly in Maximo. 
and then before I save my file and get out of it, I always change it back to query just to be safe so that next time I open the file, I don't accidentally hit run and start changing things that I don't intend to change. So I always change it back to query and then save my file and I'm done. I've updated Maximo using the MX Loader spreadsheet. So the other method that I use is using the import export function. So this one takes a little more configuration inside of Maximo. You need to navigate on the Maximo menu to integration and then over to object structures. And you use this object structures to define whatever object and sub objects and which fields within each of those that you want to export and import. If you don't happen to have this integration menu on your menu, then you might need to get someone in IT to set this up for you or have them give you access to it. Um, it is a little more of, you know, the complex features of Maximo of getting into that integration and setting it up, which is one of the nice things that the MX Loader kind of already does that for you. But before I go further, I want to say if you're doing this in the object structure thing, never, 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 ever use the out of the box object because you don't want to go in there and change any parameters and mess up anything with what Maximo does. Always take that object, copy it, make your own and then use that copied object for the import export. So this is how you do that. You go into the object structures app, you search for whichever object you want. Again, I'm using MX asset. I would find the MX asset and you can see in here, I've made a couple other copies when I've been doing different things with assets. Down here on the menu, there's a duplicate object structure. So you would click on that duplicate object structure and it would make another one. And then you can rename it with something with your company name initials, your initials, um, some kind of standard you want to use for renaming the ones that you're going to use in your upload, download, um, or import export instead of the standard ones out of the box. Be sure when you do this and you get your one enabled or your one created there, you go over here and enable this support flat structure. So this is what enables it to work with an Excel document. An Excel document is a flat structure. And it will come out as a CSV, which is a comma separated file um, Excel document. Now you need to tell Maximo which fields from the assets app that you want included in your CSV file when you download it and which ones you're going to send back when you upload it. From that um, application or that screen before, there is a, a select actions menu um, that you can go to exclude include fields. And by default, Maximo thinks you want every field that's a persistent field and you don't want any field that's a non-persistent field. So you have to go through all of these fields and as you can see in assets, I have 250 fields that are on the screen throughout the various tabs and assets and go through and tell it, you know, a checkbox, exclude it if it's a persistent field or on non-persistent fields, you would need to say include it if it's something you want or vice versa. Um, to tell it which exact field you want to upload and download. Then there's another important feature of this is add modify alias. So you know as we go from screen to screen in Maximo, the same field will show up within related objects. So you have assets and you have asset specs, which can be downloaded here. And there are some fields that are the same that show up in assets, but also show up in asset specs so that they can relate the two together and you know that they are interacting. If those two fields are in your download, you'll have two columns with the exact same name in your Excel file. And Maximo and many Excel files um, with the upload, download, or import, export, it can't handle that. So you need to go put a little prefix in your alias name. So what I like to do is I just put the prefix on everything. So it's real clear to me when I get in my Excel sheet and I'm working with it, whether it came from the asset. So I've got an A underscore in front of every single column name that came from asset and an AS underscore from every single column name that came from asset spec. But again, the only ones you have to do are the ones that are in both and it will give you a little checkbox here that says it's a duplicate if it is in both. So then finally, you need to tell Maximo which apps you will use it. So I have assets and I also have assets HSE in my Maximo. So I need to specify which one of those apps I'm going to be using both the export and the import for, and you can enable it for one of them. You can enable just the import or just the export um, or both of those apps. It depends on how you set it up. 
So again, from the object structure screen over here in more actions, you have um, the add modify application export support, add modify application import support. And you click open each of those and then add into with new row, which app you want. So this is my HSE app, and you can also tell it the maximum count. And I have mine pretty high at 10,000. Um, it's recommended to keep it a little lower, but I do sometimes try and export a lot of data. And sometimes I have issues with that and I've got to go back and uh, narrow it down a little bit. Now that you've set it up so that it can work within Maximo, you also have to enable your security so that you can see it. Um, so you need to either yourself or your IT support, whoever enables your security within Maximo, go into those particular applications. So this is a screenshot from mine. I'm in the CMMS admin supervisor group. And if you go into the assets HSE tab or uh, assets HSE application here on there, then you get this screen at the bottom. I go down here and find application export and import and make sure that these are checked. Now, you may need to restart your server for security changes to take a place, but at a minimum, minimum, you need to log out and log back in to be able to see the buttons on the asset screen. So when you get those buttons on the asset screen, you'll see they showed up right down here. The application import export are on my asset screen once I have the security enabled properly so that I can see those. And what you would do is just filter this screen down to however many you want to download. You click on your application export. You will get this screen here, and then you got to pick the object structure. So this is the one we just created. It'll show you the standard MX asset one um, if you've enabled it through those buttons I showed you before within the object structure to say it can be used here. And then it'll also show you all the different ones that you've created that are copies of that original asset structure that Maximo has. When you click OK, it'll download an Excel file again in a CSV format for you. You can open that in Excel and you will see every single column that you've told it to download. So there could be three, there could be 250, um, you know, all the different columns that you've asked for. And again, it'll come as a CSV file. You can change it to an XLSX file while you're working with it. But before you import it back into Maximo, it's best to change it back into a CSV file so it can read it in the proper format to come back in. So again, to get it back into Maximo, you just go back into your application, you hit the import button, you get the application import screen, select your object structure, and you need to select the same one that you downloaded it from. So pick the same one. And then you also select a file to import. And then there's also this little button here that says import preview. It's important to check that and let it run through the import preview to make sure that all of your data is coming back in the right format. There's no MBO conflicts with the rules on MBOs and um, that it all will come in properly once you do the import for real. So let it run through that check. It gives you a little screen, says everything's good or we have issues on these fields and then fix your issues, run it again. Once everything's good, you can leave the import preview unchecked and do these um, steps again and then run it and your data will come into Maximo. So in summary, I use two different methods, MX loader and then directly from Maximo with the import export common actions, which is supported from 7.5 onwards. And I want to remind you again, if you do use Maximo directly, always, always, always create a duplicate object structure never use the one out of the box. You don't want to take any chance of messing up that out of the box object structure. So thank you for listening today. Do anyone's got any questions? Thank you, Jennifer. That was a lot of great information. And, and I am going to reiterate, always copy the, the default <laughs> out of the box ones and change them however you like. Um, yeah. The other thing we've run into, and, and one of the questions I had is, is how many users um, do you allow to use this functionality? Do you, do you limit it to admins or, or others? But one of the other things that we've had happen is where we have multiple users that are using these structures. One of them will go in and change a structure, not realizing that other people use it too. And then they'll kind of mess each other up. So how do you manage that? And how many of your folks do you allow to take advantage of this capability? So it's pretty much my CMMS team, which is myself and two other people. So yeah, it's limited. It's not open to everybody to use. Um, if I was to open like the export feature, you mm -hmm. know, that's I think something you could give access to a lot more people is the export, but the importing back in, you have to be very careful sure. who has that access so that they don't screw up all your Maximo data importing <laughs> things back in. 
And again, with MX Loader, you can do the same thing. You can do a lot of good and you can do a lot of harm. So yes, just if you're going to use these methods, be very, very careful and very, very sure of your data before you hit go and sending yeah. it back. And, and I would say on top of that, generally, we always encourage people to do those imports into a test environment um, yeah. first before they go into production with them, just as a, another double check on that. So I did just see a message fly across the screen there that said, uh, is there a fee for MX Loader? No, there's not. That's something that they offer for free. And it is very simple and easy to update without having to do configurations inside of Maximo. Yeah, that's a great tool. So. All right. Well, thanks for your time, Jennifer. That was great information. We appreciate you sharing it. You're welcome.